In this video, you'll learn all about calculating a simple moving average using Pandas. Let's dive right in. Hi, my name's Nick and I teach Python and data science tutorials here and over on my website at datag.io. Today you'll learn all about calculating a moving average using Pandas. A moving average is frequently used in finance, economics, and science. It's a helpful tool to be able to let you smooth out your data based on variation. Okay, let's write some code. I've already filled in our import statement as well as the creation of a data frame. What we're doing here is filling in a date range that ranges from the 1st of January 2020 all the way through the end of January 2020 and has a random set of numbers scattered throughout. We then assign our date variable to the dates column and our numbers variable to the price column. So if we run this, and say we wanted to take a look at what that looked like. We could print out the head of this and we could see here that we have a date column and a price column now. So to get a better idea of what this data actually looks like, it might make sense to really visualize it using a line chart. We can do this directly in Pandas since it has a bit of matplotlib built into it. We can do this by writing out df.plot dot line x equals dates for our x-axis and y equals price for our y-axis. When we run this, we get a matplotlib object returned. We can see that the values are all over the place and that while there may be a trend, it's quite difficult to see right now because the data just jumps too much around. Granted, we're also only looking at a month's worth of data and it's hard to really deduce anything, anything from that. So let's take a look at how to use the rolling function in order to calculate a mean. What we'll do is we'll assign a new column and we'll call it moving average. We'll write df moving average and then we'll write df. And since we wanna calculate the moving average on the price column, we're gonna write price here. And then we're gonna use the rolling function. So when we do this, Pandas creates sub-series of all of the different data contained within the window size that you'll define, and then you can calculate a mean out of that. So you do need to chain these methods by writing dot mean here. We can see that we've run into an error. The error tells us that it requires at least one positional argument called the window. What this means is how big should the subseries be that we're calculating the moving average on? So for example, if we wanted to make it a window size of five, meaning that each data point in the moving average column will be calculated on a subset of five continuous items within the price column, we can simply type in five, or we could be more specific and type in window equals five. When we do this now and reprint out the first 10 rows, we can see that a new column has been created. The first four records here are gonna be missing values. And the reason for this is because by default, pandas will use the outer value as the starting point. So it will use these four val values plus this one here and then calculate the average to calculate this value. So we'll sum up all of these five values here and divide it by five to generate this value. Similarly, to get 18.4, it will add up the values three all the way through 18 and so on. Now, why don't we take a look at how this looks when we print this out now as a visualization. Again, we'll write df plot dot line x equals dates and y equals moving average. So we can see here that it's quite a bit smoother. In fact, why don't we try printing both at the same time to really see the impact that this is having. So let's copy the code we have here, and now we'll replace our y value here with a list. We'll include price and moving average. We can see here that the original values of price are still shown in blue, while the moving average is shown in orange. 
The moving average smooths out the variations in this data set quite a bit by allowing us to ignore some of the variation simply by calculating the moving average of these. Now, earlier I mentioned that by default, Pandas won't center your data, meaning that it will use the last value in order to calculate the moving average. This is common in finance, but it may not be common in other areas such as science. So what I mean by this is what if we wanted to use the first five values to calculate this value here so that the moving average isn't only using the values that precede it, but an equal number of values that precede it as well as ones that are beyond it. So for example, if we wanted to do this, we could write df rolling average center equals df price rolling. And again, we'll use a window of five here. And this time we'll write center equals true. And again, we'll throw in the mean as a chain. Now, when we print this out, we can see here that our original moving average column where the center was false, it's still using all five values to calculate this, so it starts on the fifth value. But when we set center to true, the first value appears on the third original value, meaning that it used these five values here in order to calculate this one. Okay, so the last option that we'll take a look at is the min periods feature. What this means is it requires a set number of items to appear for a moving average to be calculated. In order to do this, let's turn some of the values that we have into missing values. So we're gonna use NumPy in order to do this. So what we'll do is we'll import NumPy as NP, then we'll use the iloc accessor to change the values in the price column of index five and six to be missing values. So when we run this, let's print out our data frame again. And we can see now that we have two missing values here. By default, the min periods argument will default to the size of the window, meaning that right now, if we were to set the window size to five as we have been, the min periods argument would also be equal to five. So let's try this out. We'll write df and we'll call this column min periods. And now we'll write df price dot rolling five and we'll set min periods equals to five. And then we'll write mean. Now when we print this out, we can see that all of these are missing here because these values here are missing. So because of this, all of these moving averages have been defaulted to missing values because these values here all take into account these missing values, meaning that if any of them are missing, these values will also be missing. Now, what if we wanted to change this min periods argument to say two? When we reprint this, we can see that a moving average exists for every single value again, even for the ones where the price was missing, because there will always be two values in a window size of five in all of these combinations. It's a really powerful argument that you can use to customize the moving averages that you get out of this. Okay, so you've learned quite a bit in this video. You've learned how to calculate a moving average using pandas, how to set the window size, how to change the center of the average, as well as how to define a minimum number of periods required. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button. If you haven't yet, click subscribe and click the little bell icon beside it to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.